To wipe everything down and tack rag it and then I'll go around I'll hit all the uh, repaired parts a couple of times first and then do the whole car two or three times and uh, spoke to Richie 
So uh, make sure I'm doing it the right way. And uh, hopefully it'll be in primer later and uh, it'll look really good. I've got a huge fan there and then I've got another big fan connected to a tube pulling out from the end. I opened this door a couple of feet with some filter material beneath it and uh, I get a really good airflow. Not like a wind, but uh, zero overspray. Or z zero spray in the air. It's really good. So uh, let's hope it works out. Still going to have to do a little bit there and a little bit there. It has to be a, a little indentation there. Hope that came yeah, out pretty good. I thought I'd have to probably do something there, but it looks good. And, uh, there's a little divot there. I rolled the uh, fender lip for bigger tyres.
string to it. But uh, very happy with it. And uh, there, the hood looks like it's going to come out really nice as well. Right, it's getting close to done, ready for paint. I realise it's not perfect, but at some point you have to say, yeah, time to paint it, because it's always going to be hard to make it perfect. perfect. Now I've got a few marks like this. Pardon me, friend. 
Uh, I'm guessing I should really hit those with a little bit of prime again and the scuff them with the scuffing pad. So irritating because of overspray, I guess I'll mask it. I reprimed the edges. <laughs> I actually, I actually did put the uh, gun. I got my really small gun and uh, did it fairly thin. And I did quite a lot of tests on a piece of metal until I got the pressure just right and very little overspray and so I could literally just do a quarter of inch line just on the edges and I'll just scuff those and uh, yeah I know it's not going to be the best job in the world but uh, I think it's going to look pretty nice.
Okay, I think the car's prepped now. So all I need to do is uh, mask, degrease and tap rag after I've made the garage spotless and dust free. But uh, I think it's uh, pretty good. I'm going to do a quick
orange peel. I'm going to uh, lay the clear, clear coat on in the early morning where it's nice and cool. And uh, I don't really see any reason why it shouldn't really come out nice. There isn't even any bugs in it, no dirt in it. It's crazy. So it could potentially be a really nice paint job. system set up. Car looks good. No, we're gonna start mixing and painting now.
So I took it down with a razor blade and uh, I sanded off the corners of the razor blade and put a piece of tape around the edges. And uh, I got it pretty damn close. And then you can just see um, a little bit of the outline of where the drip was at the bottom. But uh, I've just wet sanded it with a uh, broken off stick and uh, some 600. So now I'm gonna hit it with some 12 and 1500 and then uh, go with the really fine stuff. So I started with a razor blade, then I went with uh, 600 wrapped around a little stick and then I used the same stick wrapped around my grey uh, um, scuffing pad which is, uh, works out about a thousand. I've never really used it wet but I just tried it lightly and uh, it looked like it just uh, it did a really good job. So now I'm going to use the uh, Prizactix discs. Um, I've never used these before as well. I'm going to start with 1500 then go to 3000. But I'm just going to uh, look up how to use them properly. Uh, I painted this and got a few little runs in it. Oh, I just took one out here. Um, but I've got another one here. So what I generally do is I'll, I'll mask off around it and then I get a razor blade and I uh, ground off the corners of it, put some tape over it, and I just scrape it like that. And as you can see, I'm only getting the run. And I do that until it's just starting to widen out like that. I think that's pretty good like that. And then I'm going to get a bit of 600 of some wet and dry on a stick, leave the tape around it. And just scuff that and then I'm going to uh, then progressively send it more. Okay, I taped it around that uh, square and uh, I used a razor blade to get the majority of the uh, drip out and then I just used some 600 on the end of a uh, paint stick to get the rest of the uh, one out. Now I'm going to use a uh, at 1500, 3000, and 5000. Actually, 1500 dry, uh, 3000, 5000 sprays and moisture. Uh, I'm finessing my paint. I'm uh, DAing with a 1500. I'm on a low speed. And uh, as you can see, it's cutting out all the orange peel, although this paint job, you know, when you visually look at it, it looks like it's got very little orange peel on it. But when you sand it, you can see that it has actually got orange peel. So this paint job is actually going to be really awesome. Alright, I've just dry sanded DA the uh, roof of 1500 to get rid of 90% of any orange peel. But as you can see, this paint job is pretty damn good. But even though it looks like there's very little orange peel on it, there is a lot of orange peel. Not as much as a factory paint job, but you know, you, you see the transition. The, the orange peel there. I don't want to go too near to the edges. That will blend in. So now I'm going to use the Trizac Wet 3000 and then Trizac 5000 and then uh, use a polisher. But uh, the roof should come up like glass. So that's the first bit I'm doing. Hey, this is after the uh, 3000 Trizac. So first I did the 1500 dry DA, 
and then uh, the T thousand trays out. And uh, as you can see, yeah, there's the transition there. So I've just done, I've done the roof. Kind of stay away from the edges a little bit. And then on the last polishing thing, we'll just polish it in because it's so narrow, you're not going to really see the um, orange peel on the way edges. But uh, as you can see, it's pretty damn smooth. Right, that's after 5,000 tries that. Now it's ready to uh, use the polisher. Sanded it with uh, 1500, then uh, wet trays at 3000, 5000, buffed with polished, and then uh, waxed. And, uh, that's pretty good.